We can give God the first fruits of our time, just as the farmer can give the first fruits of the field. And maybe that's a way to apply Exodus 23, 19. But what else? What else do, have we been given and blessed with besides time? Well, we also have our bodies. What would it mean to offer the first and best of our bodies to God? Have you ever heard of the power team? It's a group of Christian bodybuilders that go around giving shows of, of strength. They'll do things like bending steel pipes with their teeth while sharing about the spiritual strength that God gives them in Christ. They're offering their bodies to the Lord. But looking around, I don't see many of us who will be putting steel pipes in our teeth and bending them. So what, how could we bless God with our bodies and return a first fruits offering? Well, we do put things in our mouth, usually not steel, but there are many things we put in our mouths. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians six 19, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? So are we putting stuff in our mouths that brings honor to the Holy Spirit? Do we make eating the bread of Holy Communion as much of a priority as we do eating at a tailgate party? Are we putting stuff in our mouths that, that is healthy for our bodies and that are raised in such a way that it's healthy for the earth and that it's healthy for the farmers who raise it? Some of you buy fair trade coffee and products such as this as a way of choosing to honor God with the things that you put in your mouth? Do we avoid putting things in our mouth that would make us addicted and slave to chemicals rather than servants of Christ? Do we share what we put in our mouths with others? And if we do share, is it our first and our best or our leftovers? For our mission offering this month, we're going to collect cash donations and food for ACBC Food Shelf. And knowing that, I know that many of you will go and, and look through your cupboards to find some food to share. And in this way, we are bringing our harvest to the Lord. We work for a paycheck and then convert that into food. And so in sharing our paychecks, we are sharing our first fruits. But is it our first and our best that we share, or is it something else? See if you recognize this scenario. It's five minutes before you have to leave for church, and your daughter reminds you that it's Food Cross Sunday, which you had forgotten. So you get down on your knees, and you reach into the bottom shelf, you know, the one where you never put food that you use because it's too hard to find anything down there. That's where the food shelf food is found. And reaching deep into the corner, your hand wraps around a dusty can of beans. Not green beans, not baked beans, but lima beans. <laughs> Blowing the dust off, you look at the expiration date on the can. January 2004. <laughs> when did I buy these? I hate lima beans. It must have been for some hot dish or something that I never got around to making. Oh, well, I wonder if they're still okay to eat. Lima beans can't really go bad, can they? I mean, they taste bad to begin with. <laughs> somebody must like them, though. Besides, if somebody is hungry enough, they'll eat anything. I'll bring these to church. Now, I'm not looking down at any gifts shared. Even lima beans, though there may be a reason why they're never mentioned in the Bible. Every gift is a blessing, but we certainly couldn't call that a first fruits gift, an offering of our best to the Lord. And that's what Exodus 23 challenges us to do. That's what the Israelites did in Leviticus 23. And that's what the old Brits did in Loaf Mass Day, before they celebrated, before they used any of the blessings that God had provided. They gave their first and their best to the Lord. And now while you're pondering what that might mean in your own life, I want to remind you that there is nothing that you can do to make Jesus love you more than he already does. He already loves you so much that he gave his life for you, and he continues to bless your life even now. 
God can't love you anymore. But we can love God more. And every day can be a merry loaf mass day when we give our first and our best to God of all parts of our life. Not just grain from the field, most of us don't have that. But our whole lives, are we giving our first and our best to God? So before we jump into Christmas this year, let me just wish you Merry Loaf Mass Day, even if it is a little late. Let us pray. God, thank you for the food you provide us, especially for the meal of Holy Communion that we share with you and for all the blessings in life. And in every part of our normal, everyday, workaday world, may we find ways to honor you, to give you the best of our time, our efforts, even our bodies for your kingdom. Lord, we celebrate today. We celebrate your goodness, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to